So now we know about uh, vertical asymptotes, end behavior. We've known about y-intercepts and x-intercepts for a while. And we're going to graph this rational function. So this is 4.2. And we're going to be graphing. We're just going to go in the order I have it written here. Domain, well, don't divide by zero. Same rules as before. There's no square roots to worry about. What makes us divide by zero? Right here. I see x plus 3. If you remember factors, how do they correspond with zeros? The x value that makes x, x plus 3 equals zero. If you can't do that in your head, it's no problem. I'm just going to set x plus 3 equals zero. When does it equal zero? x equals negative 3. And this just comes right out of the uh, correspondence theorem that we have uh, we saw back in chapter 3. So here's a bad x. What other value is bad? Well, this is x squared. What x value makes that 0? It's a little bit silly. You could write x squared equals 0 and then realize, well, that's 0. That also make, uh, zero makes this 0. You could rewrite x squared. Um, you could write it as x minus 0. It's a little bit silly to do this. x minus 0 squared. And you could say, ah, x equals 0 makes that 0. So we're going to write... I could write real numbers except negative 3 and 0, but we're going to go negative infinity, negative 3, union, negative 3, 0, union, 0, infinity. So this is our domain right here. And you probably answered a question similar to this at some point uh, way back in functions when we talked about introduction of functions. Now for vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes happen when your denominator equals zero. Now, these are the x values we just took out of the domain. I want to be a little bit careful. Does negative three make the numerator zero? If I plug in negative three, I do not get zero. If I plug in zero, I also do not get zero. So these are vertical asymptotes. Negative three, what is multiplicity? You can see that there's no exponent here, so the multiplicity is 1. So the multiplicity is 1, which is odd, so this is a cross. x equals 0. What is multiplicity of x equals 0? It's 2. And 2 is bounce. Now for end behavior. How do we do end behavior? What you need to do is throw away all the low powers. You want to be careful. What you should not be doing, x minus 2, this term, just looking at x minus 2, this has degree 1. But what you want to do, what you want to get rid of is not the entire x minus 2, just the minus 2 part. So I'm going to throw away low, low powers. So this is going to look like now, I don't want to call it r of x because we're changing it. So it's no longer r of x. So that's why I use, I just switched to the letter y. If you want to give it a different name, you can call it uh, whatever other letter of x, f of x, g of x, h of x, q of x, some other letter. But you don't want to call it r of x if you're going to be changing it. Negative 2 stays there. I'm just going to write it as x x squared, what I'm doing is getting rid of the minus 2, getting rid of the minus 1, x plus 3, so it's just x, x squared, just x squared, combined the terms together, x cubed over x cubed, now they are the same, they cancel out, it reduces to negative 2, y equals negative 2, so our end behavior, horizontal line, y equals negative 2. All right, y-intercept, how do we get that? We want to plug in 0, r of 0. A great reason to not write r of x here, because this is not r of x, and it would mess us up down here if I plug in 0. I have to carefully plug in 0 for x here. So I get negative 2 times 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 0 minus 1 is negative 1 squared. 3 times x minus 0 is 0 squared. Now I could simplify all this top down. I also will find out that oh, I'm divided by 0. So 
What does that mean? There's no y-intercept. This is undefined. I could have seen that earlier if I looked in the domain and saw that 0 is not in there. So there is no y-intercept. How about x-intercepts? Well, where do we look for that? You look in the numerator for x-intercepts. x minus 2 corresponds to x equals positive 2. x minus 1 corresponds to x equals 1. This is even, odd, I'm looking at powers. Not the number 2, but the exponent is odd. So we get cross, even, bounce. So we get cross and bounce. The best way to think about where do um, vertical asymptotes versus x-intercepts come from, your x-intercepts are on the top. And your vertical asymptotes are on the bottom. So this is a good way to remember this. X-intercepts on the top, vertical asymptotes on the bottom. Now on the graph, we are going to lay out everything we can. So we're going to start. X-intercepts are pretty easy to draw. There is 1 and 2. So we have 1, 2 vertical asymptotes x equals negative 3, there's negative 3. What do vertical asymptotes look like? They're vertical lines. Most people draw them as these dashed lines. I don't like to use a solid line because I don't want to confuse it with the y-axis. Now I have a slight problem because I have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. This is a great time to use a second color. A lot of people use highlighter. I don't have a highlighter on my desk. So I'm going to use a green pen, and I just sketch it right down next to the vertical line, or ne right next to the uh, Y axis. Unfortunately, I did not get a Y intercept, but that's okay. Our, no, our end behavior, Y equals negative two. There's negative two. And we're going to draw this out. Same thing, you would dash line. I don't want to confuse this with the other axis, the x-axis. So there's our dashed line. How do asymptotes work on a graph? Your graph is supposed to approach the asymptotes in the proper areas. So what does that mean? I like to start at one end, either the left end or the right end. I'll start on the right end here. So I need to start at the rightmost point that I have, which is the y-intercept here. Now I have to decide, do I go down to the right or up to the right? I have to approach the horizontal asymptote. So if I go up to the right, that would be very bad because eventually I have to get close to the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote. I'd have to curve back down and I'd have to cut through the x-axis a second time. I do not have another uh, x-intercept, so I could not do that. So there's only one choice, which is from here I approach the vertical uh, horizontal asymptote. Now I'm going to uh, work my way to the left. What happens after uh, I go past 2? x equals 2 is odd, and that's a cross. So I need to cross the x-axis. So there's a cross. And after that, I need to uh, hit the x-axis uh, again, and I'm going to be bouncing. So it's going to look like that. And now we have a vertical asymptote right here. And I need to follow the, because of the bounce, I have no choice. I have to approach the vertical asymptote in the positive direction. Now I, I drew this graph really tall. I could draw it all the way up here like this. And now I have a x equals zero multiplicity two bounce. So I need to bounce off the ceiling. So it's going to approach on the other side on the top. And what's the next thing that happens to the left is another vertical asymptote. Now, regardless of if that's crossing or bouncing, that doesn't matter yet. It will matter soon. 
I do not have an x-axis intercept here, so I cannot cross the x-axis. Also, I don't know exactly how far down this function goes. It definitely does not go to the x-axis, so I'm just going to draw it like this. You have to wait until calculus before you can figure out exactly where this bottom point is here. It is not as simple as a parabola, so you can't just get a vertex here. So it goes up and then up again. Now I do need to use the uh, fact that it crosses here. And what happens after that as I work my way further to the left, I have to approach the horizontal asymptote as well. So this is our uh, final graph. And we have domain, vertical asymptote, end behavior, y-intercepts, and x-intercepts. And of course, what are we going to be doing next? We will be looking at the uh, inequalities, picking out either the positive parts or the negative parts, and then stating what x values make it positive or negative. And I really recommend uh, do practice problems on graphing. This will be on your final exam, and it will probably uh, involve an inequality as well.